Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcast, As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. This is part three in our Lyme series. You know, Lyme disease can cause so many symptoms like fever and rash and joint pain and fatigue, even leading to arthritis, heart problems, and neurological issues. In the last two episodes, you heard us speak to three people, Devin Dion, Adrian Nolan Smith, and Robin Shirley, who all used varying combinations of nutrition, detoxification, and alternative medicine to heal themselves from their Lyme disease. So in part three of our Lyme series today, first you'll hear Dr. Stephen Cabral answer a listener's question about Lyme disease. Then we're throwing it all the way back to episode 92 with Amy Valpone. And Amy shares her harrowing story of overcoming Lyme and how changing her diet and learning how to detox absolutely saved her life when she was at death's door. But first, Food Heals Nation, who else is ready to get $10 off your order of $50 or more over at trueleafmarket.com? You heard my interview with Parker, where we talked all about the benefits of growing your food at home, how easy it is, how affordable it is, and how amazing it is when you can head on over to True Leaf Market and get your GMO free seeds, get your growing kits, get your microgreens, get your sprouts, get your wheatgrass, all of these things that you can do at home so easily. I'm personally so excited about the growing kits, like they have their sprouting kits where you can sprout broccoli, they've got their wheatgrass kits where you can sprout organic wheatgrass for yourself and for your pets, they've got their tomato starter kit, the Mexican salsa kit, the medicinal tea kit, the culinary herb kit, plus an entire array of microgreens that you don't want to miss out on. You can grow your own oregano and kale and basil and buckwheat and Brussels sprouts and so much more. And of course, you can sprout, you can grow in your home, you can grow in your kitchen, you can grow in your yard. They're made for apartments, they're made for yards, wherever you plant your seeds, you can grow your own food with True Leaf Market with amazing, healthy, organic, non-GMO seeds. Head on over to trueleafmarket.com, use the discount code FOODHEALS10, you'll get $10 off an order of $50 or more plus free shipping over $75. To learn more about how True Leaf Market can help you grow your own food at home, go back and listen to my episode with Parker Garlitz. That is episode 412 of the Food Heals podcast. And again, go get your grow on, go get all your organic non-GMO seeds at trueleafmarket.com. Use the discount code FOODHEALS10 to save $10 off an order of $50 or more. All right, next up, I've got Dr. Stephen Cabral answering a listener's question about Lyme, leaky gut, and SIBO. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. So this is a Food Heals Nation listener who has become a friend. So she's near and dear to my heart. And she's um, suffering from some Lyme disease. And she's young. And um, she says, just when I started to make some progress with my Lyme, I got diagnosed with leaky gut and SIBO. 
I just started trying to do a low FODMAP diet, but it's limited as a vegan. So of course, I told her to go listen to your episodes because you do have shows on this, but I would love to just get your thoughts right here, right now on what are some things that she can start doing? Yeah, happy to help. And, and what's interesting is that many of the viruses or diseases out there actually get worse or come about in the first place because of gut-based imbalances. So what I mean by that is that most likely the yeast overgrowth or the candida or the bacteria was already there. And it, what it allowed for then is more intestinal permeability, which means more of a stressed immune system. So gut permeability is essentially when your intestines, which is about 25, 26 feet long, you have about 20 feet of small intestine, about five to six feet of long intestine. When it starts to become permeable, more proteins and bacteria and things can actually escape from the gut. And then it goes right into the bloodstream. And when it goes in the bloodstream, then your immune system becomes activated to a much larger degree, which over time really stresses the body, creates more inflammation and wears you down. The other reason why people end up with candida overgrowth or SIBO when they get Lyme is because they take a longer dose of antibiotics, typically doxycycline or another one that's used for Lyme. Now, the issue though, so either way, you know, we have candida overgrowth, we have bacterial overgrowth, which is sometimes called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is typically where that overgrowth is because the small intestine is not supposed to be massively populated with all of this bacteria. So mm -hmm. what we have to understand is that by doing a FODMAP diet, which is the fructo, oligo, di, mono, and polysaccharides, those are just different types of sugars that can feed yeast or bacteria, which are actually helpful when you have a balanced gut because they act as prebiotics and harmful when you have overgrowth, is that we have to understand that that is more of a symptomatic-based approach to relieving symptoms. So it's not going to get rid of your candida overgrowth or SIBO unless you stay on it the rest of your life, which is what I always try to share with people. What we okay. need to do is actually use natural biofilm disruptors, which are things that remove the covering over the bacteria and the yeast. And we need to use antimicrobials such as clove, oregano, uh, caprylic acid, uva ursi, uh, grapefruit seed extract. There's so many out there that are really, really helpful. And then when we start to actually destroy kill, so we can combine the diet with those antimicrobials and um, things like fluorofilm, a, a, back, a biofilm disruptor, then we start to repopulate the gut with healthy bacteria. So not right away, but then we start to layer in those probiotics first, like a lactobacillus, then more of a full strain uh, dairy-free probiotic. So that's how we truly get rid of it. If not, I mean, you just deal, we just see it all the time. You deal with it for years and years and years, and you end up eating less and less foods and you're more and more inflamed. So we use something called the CBO protocol. Um, you can look at the ingredients, you can look at the formula, you combine that with a good healthy diet, and that's really the way to rebalance your gut. Okay. How do we learn more about the CBO protocol? And can you spell that <laughs> so I can put it in the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. So the easiest way is just stephencabral.com forward slash CBO the two, three letters, and it just stands for candida and bacterial optimizing uh, protocol. That's it. So CBO. Okay, perfect. I have okay, lots of so free she... podcasts on this as well. And I know that, you know, you're welcome to link up that page, but I probably have maybe a hundred podcasts just on digestion and rebalancing because there's four main digestive issues, H. pylori, parasites, yeast, and bacteria. So if you can fix those plus intestinal permeability, I mean, your body gets so much healthier because 80% of your immune system is actually linked to your digestive tract. Oh my gosh, this is such good information. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass it along to her even before the episode airs. And um, a last question. So with the CBO protocol, is that where she will learn how to get the biofilm disruptors and the antimicrobials for that? Yes. And again, like I always say, you don't have to use the protocols that we recommend, but you can actually see how it's formulated. You can say, okay, this is what's going on month one, then month two, month three, because you don't use probiotics right away when you already have bacterial overgrowth, you remove first and then you start to layer them in. So it's all there as well. Oh, that's so, so important to know. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Cabral. I will put that website in the show notes and pass this information along. I really appreciate this. Happy to help.
All right, Food Heals Nation, to get Dr. Cabral's CBO healing protocol, go to stephencabral.com slash CBO. Use the code FOODHEALS10 and you'll get 10% off your order. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside, but that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. And next up, clean eating and detoxing saved Amy Valpone's life. For years, she suffered from various ailments, including Lyme disease and PCOS, and conventional medicine failed to provide an accurate diagnosis. Doctors treated her symptoms with pill after pill, but nothing seemed to work. People literally assumed she was faking it. Even when she was lying in a hospital bed with a morphine drip in her arm, her HR department at her job contacted her to say they thought she was bluffing because she was blogging. She was just sharing her experience. This was the moment when Amy decided that if she survived, she would dedicate her life to helping others get healthy, and that's exactly what she did. This is her story. Roll it, Roxy. 
After suffering for years from chronic pain and visiting over 500 doctors, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> who told her nothing was wrong with her, Amy was finally diagnosed by functional and integrative doctors with a multitude of issues, including Lyme disease and polycystic ovarian syndrome. She also learned that she could not digest gluten, soy, or sugar, and decided that for her health, she had to overhaul her lifestyle. Amy adopted an organic, clean lifestyle, and with the help of acupuncture, yoga, meditation, herbal medicine, along with eating organic, fresh foods, she restored her body, remaining symptom-free ever since. I can't wait to hear this story. Amy also had all of her mercury fillings removed from her mouth, went through two years of IV chelation, detoxed her home from cosmetics to cleaners. What a story. I can't wait to hear it in her own words. Welcome, Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Well, you guys really did your homework on me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank yes, you. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have so much information on your website. You have such an interesting story. I mean, I've I've met plenty of people that have been the doctors and they can't figure out why the, the patient is not feeling well. But 500, you really saw 500 doctors? I did. As like pathetic as that sounds, it's, um, you no, know, going it's out thorough. to... <laughs> it crazy. You know, when I was at Mayo Clinic, I saw over 100 doctors. And then when I was in the hospital, you know, hospital for special surgery, and then, you know, I exhausted about 15 hospitals throughout all of New Jersey and New York. And at each of those hospitals, I saw at least 30 doctors. So that's where a lot of the numbers came from. But a lot of other doctors came from me literally running around kind of like a crazy person when I was in my 20s trying to figure out going from doctor to doctor to doctor, which was pretty sad and, and really traumatizing. <laughs> it is really sad and traumatizing because it starts to wear on you mentally, I'm sure. Oh, you gosh, let me tell you, you know, it's interesting now that I'm out of chronic illness and, you know, I'm 33 now. And so I'm in perfect health, but I have to tell you the last part of my healing is coming from me doing the healing on the trauma in my mind from all of this. Yeah. And I really feel like that'll be my, what my next book is about, because I think a big part of the healing we don't realize is kind of like in our subconscious and, and can suck us back in, you know? Yeah. And we talk about this all the time because for me, that was such a foreign concept. Once I learned how to heal my body, I was like, this is it. I just have to eat well and life is wonderful. But that's not true. If you're not taking a holistic approach and looking at your mind, body and spirit, you're going to be missing something and not understanding why you're still not at your optimal health. So I would love to talk about that. But first, can you just go back and tell us like, what symptoms were you experiencing that you had to go to 500 doctors to figure out what was wrong with you? Definitely. So when I was about 22, I was working in corporate America and my legs started swelling up with about 40 pounds of fluid every day. Mm. So I know it was, and I was working at like Vogue magazine of all places, right? So <laughs> you got to look hot there. I can't have oh those swollen gosh. legs. Totally. I cannot even tell you. So it was so bad. Yeah, that we I all saw take my pants off by the end of the day. And so I would wake up in the morning and I was fine. But by the end of the day, my legs were about, you know, 40 pounds heavier. My body was about 40 pounds heavier. That's and crazy. So if, you know, you got, I got the whole nine yards, you know, stop eating sodium, stop drinking too much water. Like, and I was like, this is, this is nuts. So after a few, like two weeks, I think of it, I went to the emergency room just to be like, what's going on here? Cause I didn't even know where to go. And sure. so they took my white blood cell count and, you know, just like regular vitals. And my white blood cell count was like 1.1 which pretty much means like you're dead because normal is like 4.0. Mm. And so they thought I had leukemia. So they rushed me to St. Vincent's Cancer Center, literally like bent me over and gave me a bone marrow biopsy. And so that mm. started the entire journey. And I had to wait, you know, five days for the results thinking I had cancer. And the next, gosh, four years I spent, it was negative. So I did not have leukemia, but my bone marrow was like this jelly, jelly substance. And so they thought I was anorexic. They thought I, you know, was crazy. They couldn't find something wrong with me. And so every two weeks I'd have to go to the cancer center for blood work to see if my vitals were getting better, which they weren't. Mm. And so I exhausted all the doctors in New York city. And so they sent me to Mayo clinic for a week where they did another bone marrow biopsy. And they again found nothing wrong. And they said, you know, we're dismissing you. We did a whole week of workup and we can't find anything wrong with you. So things started to get, just get progressively worse. I started to start to feel worse. I had something called SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And they put me on this really crazy antibiotic called Zyfaxin and put me on like four rounds of it. 
And mm. so they told me not to take probiotics while I was on it. Oh my God. I thought it was crazy. And these were like big time doctors from like the best GI hospital in Manhattan, which was crazy. So long story short, from all of the junk that they were giving me, I was on steroids, painkillers, water pills. I had myositis in my leg muscles. So they were doing muscle biopsies on me and I could barely walk. Mm. And I contacted C. Diff colitis and you get that from hospitals and also from like overuse of antibiotics. And so I was given 24 hours to live. And oh my God. Yeah. I was on disability from my job and we exhausted all the hospitals in New York and New Jersey. And my parents took me down to Philadelphia. And so I laid there with morphine dripping, you know, into my arms and oh my, my human resources department called me and said, we think you're kidding. Cause you know, cause you're blogging. And I was like, <laughs> this is insane. I am never, ever, ever going back to a corporate job ever again. Like they don't care about me. I can't do this. Like I'm going to, if I survive and if I make it out of here, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to helping other people realize they're not crazy and something really is wrong. And so that's what I did. <laughs> oh my God. Your story right now is giving me chills. My jaw well, is dropped. Was just like yeah. the beginning of it because then I started to understand which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in a little bit, but functional integrative medicine. And through that, I mean, they found Lyme disease, which was false negatives for 15 years and wow. polycystic ovarian syndrome and leaky gut and chronic candida and hypothyroidism. And I mean, fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr. I mean, it was like a waterfall of, I mean, I literally was like, what? What? Like, it was just insane. And so that really sparked, you know, my healing journey. And I started to realize, like, I can heal my body. I know I can do this. And it took, you know, I had to figure out that I had heavy metals and mold. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you know the whole shebang, getting your mercury fillings removed and going through IV chelation and detoxing your your whole life from chemicals. And, you know, and here I am 20 living in, you know, New York City, where everybody's like out partying every night. And I'm like, I can only really drink water and like steamed broccoli. <laughs> so you're 20 years old. You're given 24 hours to live. You're on morphine. And then what happened? How did you turn this around at this point? So I ended up coming back to New York. And that's when I started to discover functional integrated medicine. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And so I talk about it, like the whole story in my book and, and really the process that I went through and how it just started by me starting with a functional medicine doctor and being like, you know what? I'm going to figure out what's going on and what's wrong with me. And they found, you know, the heavy metals and the mold and the candida and, and everything else that I had mentioned earlier. And they got me off the steroids and the painkillers and the water pills and started healing my body. And it was pretty incredible. And it was pretty emotional as well, because for the first time, someone had actually figured out what was wrong with me. And so that was just mind blowing to me because for so many years, people told me that I was crazy. Yeah. So... When that happened, I actually came out on my blog with my story because before that, everyone just thought I was anorexic and crazy. And so once I had the answers, I was like, okay, I'm going to come out with this and talk to people. And that's when my blog really started to take off. And it went from just being a food blog to being like, this is my journey. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm healing my body and trying to figure out how to be healthy in a real way. Because, you know, at the end of the day, your doctor doesn't go home with you. You really have to be your own doctor. Not, not unless you're really lucky. To oh, God, that's the <laughs> yeah, exact. That's a joke. It's so funny. I said, if he does, can I please have his number? <laughs> and is um, he on Grey's like, Anatomy? <laughs> yeah, but I think that like, not to self-diagnose, but like you've got to be, you know your body better than anyone else. And these doctors were just experimenting on me and they don't know any better. They, they're known to give drugs and they don't understand how to heal these underlying imbalances. And it's, it's really sad. And so that's really what I started to do. And, and I went through about 10 functional integrated medicine doctors and, and focused on everything from candida to thyroid to gut to heavy metals. And I realized not one doctor will ever heal you. You need a team of doctors that, yes. that understand everything. So I had one person for chelation, one for thyroid, one for gut, one for candida, one for Lyme. And as wonderful as they all were, you know, they're specialists in their field. So you know, the Lyme person didn't understand the gut and the gut person didn't understand Lyme. And so I had to have them all work together. I mean, it was, it was a full-time job and you have to be in charge of all of them. And so that was a really, really big wake up call. 
Absolutely. And Amy, can you tell our listeners, because I actually, I know a little bit about functional and integrative doctors, but can you just, can you tell us the difference between those and regular old Western doctors? Of course, definitely. So a functional medicine doctor, so say, for instance, your father walks into a doctor's office and say, you know, the Western medicine doctor would say, you know, hey, Tony, you have high cholesterol Mm -hmm. and here's Lipitor. And they'd see for a few minutes and dismiss you and that's it. You go get your prescription refilled and you're on Lipitor. You don't change your diet. You don't change your environment. You don't change your stress. Now, a functional integrative medical doctor, on the other hand, is actually sitting with you for like an hour or two and reviewing what you're eating, how your stress is, you know, what's going on in your life right now and your whole history, what kind of pipes you had in your house when you grew up, you know, how much seafood you're eating, you know, for heavy metals, like maybe mold exposure, like all these different things that we don't even think about. Right. And so the chemicals that are in our environment and and different things like that. And that was my big wake up call. And so I had to figure out how to detox my cleaning supplies, my beauty products, my personal care products, and my food, because we learned, or I learned, you know, through all of this from different doctors that our skin is our biggest organ. And so I started reading every functional medicine book I could. And I started diving in and looking at, you know, EWG and, and, you know, the environmental working group and figuring out, you know, what chemicals I should avoid. And that's why I, what I laid out in my new book, you know, how to detox your cleaning supplies, your beauty products, your personal care products and your food, because as much as it's about food, it, you know, it's also about, you know, what you're putting on your skin. Cause our, everything you put on your skin from your sunscreen to your chapstick, which I'm sure you ladies both know gets absorbed, you know, into your bloodstream. Yep. And once I really started to clean all that up, I mean, I had no idea why people bought like, you know, go green cleaning products. I was Mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? Like, why are people buying organic? I don't get it. The organic lettuce looks just like the conventional lettuce. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. And I started to realize, oh my gosh, there's chemicals in all these foods and there's chemicals in all these products and I'm eating them. And this is, this is insane. And my liver enzymes were so high, they wanted to do a liver biopsy on me. And so as soon as I started to literally detox my entire life. My liver enzymes started to normalize. My life started to like, everything started to balance my hormones. I mean, there was a lot of different protocols I had to do, but the majority of it, that was a big, big part of it. And let me ask you, going back to before you started having these symptoms and before you were at 20 years old, like almost on your deathbed, what was your diet and lifestyle like? Because I feel like even if we're living the typical American diet, these diseases usually generally don't come on until later in life. So do you think that you were in a maybe a house with mold or you were, you know, using extra toxic ingredients? Like, do you have any sense of that? Like, were you eating fast food every day? Can you tell us a little bit about your lifestyle back then? Of course, actually, I was not like I actually was not eating any fast foods. I was eating, you know, conventional spinach and conventional chicken Mm -hmm. and, you know, eating a healthy diet. I mean, I I would use like Splenda or Crystal Light because I had, you know, Mm -hmm. had no idea in college. I drank Diet Coke. You were working at Vogue. Totally. (laughs) Totally. totally, Who can blame you? Yeah. Right. So like, that's really what was going on there. But overall I was very, very, very healthy and health conscious. And so what I write about in my book is that I have a kind of like a handicap to detox and it's called methylation. And so we're all born with these genes called MTHFR. And so kids with autism are missing two snips of the gene but I'm missing one of them. And so when you're missing one or two, it handicaps your ability to detox on a daily basis. So you have to really support your body on a daily basis to detox. And so that's what I had to learn how to do. That's fascinating. So you're missing one of the genes and how did you discover that? Who discovered that? So a functional medicine doctor, it's just a blood test. And I have it all like listed out what to ask for in my book. I did three pages of every functional medicine test that I did worth hundreds of thousands of dollars because I wanted to hand over the keys to somebody else and, you know, steer their life in the right direction. Because I wish I had 10 years ago, a list of all the tests that would give me the actual results and not false negatives. And so I lead people through like hormone tests and the, you know, intestinal permeability tests for gut health and the two Lyme disease tests, the two labs that I, I trust and the ones that finally gave me positive results. And so 
that's where I put a lot of the information about the MTHFR. I also wrote about a lot in the intro and I get into some really detailed information about it so that some, because a lot of people are suffering from this, it's actually 30% of our population, but Western medicine doesn't test for it. So a lot of people who are having some kind of toxicity, whether it's eczema, arthritis, you know, acne, bloating, gut issues, headaches, you know, fatigue, whatever it may be, a lot of it's just toxicity. And so you need a detox and by detox, obviously, you know, as you ladies know, it's not about starving yourself on a juice mm-hmm. cleanse that like media makes it out to be, but it's right. really just about like eating organic, getting eight hours of sleep, skin brushing, Epsom salt baths, infrared saunas, like supporting your body's ability to detox on a daily basis and really supporting your liver. So, you know, it's really just helping your body out every day to get these toxins out of your body. Cause whether it's car exhaust or tap water or, you know, pesticides and herbicides or, or pharmaceutical drugs, they're, everything is, you know, goes through our liver and, and we become toxic. Yeah. And it's so frustrating because the media does make it out to be this, you know, starvation thing. And then they say that, well, your body naturally detoxes itself. So there's no purpose in doing this cleanse. Well, yes, it does, but you have to give it the tools that it needs to do so. And you can't be blocking it by these toxic lifestyle choices and environmental choices that, I mean, environmental factors that you have no control over. So we've got to help the body detox and to have a gene on top of that that you have no control over, you know, you, you got to do it. I absolutely support what you're saying. And I can't wait to read your book. It sounds- yeah. And the Lyme disease as well. I mean, I, I'm from Long Island, so I know a lot of people that have battled Lyme disease and that alone is a mighty feat. But then on top of that, it's, it's, I was thinking about all of the things you were, all of your symptoms you were describing and then the, the issues that your body was dealing with. And it's like, one could have probably, you know, not created, but not helped your body. And then another one popped up and another one. And, and I'm sure you played the whole game of what caused what or how did I get that or what? And it could be dizzying, but God, kudos to you for really taking control, as you've said, of your own health. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. I applaud I- you. I haven't done this in a while. Applause. Applause. <laughs> applause. <laughs> oh, thank you. That means so much to me. Well, I really think that you know, if more people realized what an impact they have on their own health, they could change their lives forever. And I think that we hand over, you know, a lot of what could be our well-being and we put it in the hands of people who really don't know us and don't know our bodies well. They're just going based off of medical facts and how their other patients, you know, react. And we're all very different. And, you know, I really feel like there are so many people struggling. I mean, just last night I had like one of my book launch parties out in New Jersey. And I mean, if there were like over 200 people, and I have to be honest, there were only two people in line out of 200 that didn't have a health issue. And guess what? Mm-hmm. Those 198 people were all women. Everyone was a woman and everyone was ages 17 to 30. Colitis, Crohn's, on steroids. And I'm like, mm. what's going on? This is insane. Yeah. And, you know, if there's so many people suffering, but you know, it's not, they don't look, we don't, we don't look sick. So it, that was, it's like, you know, this invisible illness, no one understands what's going on with you because yeah. you look perfectly healthy. Right. Yeah. And so that was a big part of it. You know, my friends from, you know, high school, college did not understand. And in corporate America, I was termed sick girl, you know, because I always had a different health issue. And so people, unless you're in a wheelchair, you know, or you're going through, you know, chemo or something, people really can't relate because it's, it's not, you know, something that's, that's talked about. And I said to myself, I'm going to be the woman that comes out and talks about all of this stuff to help other people who are suffering because you're not alone. And I think that's such a huge thing for women to realize and and even men that are suffering. Like there are so many people suffering out there, but not many people are talking about it, you know? Yeah. And I hate the feeling of, of being judged or being looked on as lazy when you're like, I'm suffering here just because I don't look like it every single day. Sometimes I have energy. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I can go to work. Sometimes I can't. Right. Doesn't mean that I'm not suffering. And so people don't understand that. And that's been brought to light in the Real Housewives show. If you guys watch that. Yes. I was just going to say that. That's so funny. (laughs) It makes me so mad because I watch it and I'm like, I know exactly how she feels. Some days she's fine and some days she's not. And I don't have Lyme disease, but you know, it's like 
just because she's able to go out to lunch with people and smile for the camera and look good one day doesn't mean she's not suffering and sick doesn't mean she's faking it like that makes me so angry and to put that in the media for other people to judge her and then think about other people in their lives and they're like oh they're all these people are faking it they're fine you know that's bs and they actually kind of came full circle with the show and luckily showed that like hey like the conclusion of the women are now like okay you're really sick so that's good for america all these women that are watching this dumb show but you know it makes me so angry because people are suffering in silence and are suffering and being judged for it. And it's not fair and it's not right. It's so true. And you know, I I had never talked about this before actually, but when I was on disability, I'll never forget. I had like, you know, maybe one day a week I'd feel really good. Yeah. And so I'd go for a walk and I was, I live in Manhattan. So Mm -hmm. I was so scared. Mm -hmm. I literally was scared shitless. Somebody was going to see me and think that I was like, kidding and out shopping or something, even though I was just going for a walk in Central Park, I couldn't even handle it. And I felt so guilty. But then the next day I'd end up in bed, like chronically sick. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is, it's like such a shift in perception because you are really sick in bed, but then it, it's, it screws with your head. And I think that's why right now that I'm out of the illness portion, I'm really focused on the mind body and doing a lot of, I'll be honest, I'm doing a lot of energy work and a lot of healing body work. And I'm realizing we're really all just energy in these bodies. And to really fully heal, you need to do some sort of energy component, like a Reiki or an acupuncture or, you know, some kind of, you know, I do this, something called like muscle testing, things that can help support your body along with, you know, these functional medicine doctors. And I think that's really, it's a big, big part of it, but it's, it's exhausting and it's a full-time job. And, and like these women I met last night, they're 20 something years old. They don't have the money to go to these doctors and they don't have the time to put this all together. I mean, everybody's stressed, everybody's exhausted and it comes down to, I mean, I forget this book that I was reading, but all of this comes down to stress. We're all so stressed out. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we don't think about it, our bodies are stressed, you know, just fighting all of this stuff. It's a rough world nowadays. Amy, I had to ask, I have to ask you, have you ever tried craniosacral therapy? I have. So I had really bad. So here's an interesting story. So when I handed my book in last January, you're going to die at this. So I handed it in on January 1st, 2015. Mm -hmm. And January 5th, my doctor overdosed me on progesterone cream. And it was the universe's way of saying, just because you don't take pharmaceutical drugs anymore, you cannot even do pharmaceutical creams. Mm -hmm. And so I gained 70 pounds in five days. So I'm usually like, I'm 5'2", I'm about 100 pounds. Wait, what? How? (laughs) You should have seen me. I How did that crisis. happen? Yeah. 70 I mean, pounds in five it's, days? Yeah. So it's my whole endocrine system shut down. Oh my and God. so what happened was the hormones got so high that it kicked up candida in my body. And mm. so candida attacked every muscle. Yeast didn't come in any other form, which is what I thought was fascinating. I never had a yeast infection, never had sinus problems or anything like that during this time. But it attacked every muscle in my body and they oh thought I had fibromyalgia or like something really serious with my muscles. Like they, they had no idea what was going on. And so I started doing cranial sacral because even the muscles around my eyes and my ears, I couldn't even touch. And it helped me tremendously, but it ended up, that was before we realized it was candida. But once I got on some really, really strong antifungals, we ended up killing it all. But it took, you know, the die off was me four months in bed. Let's just say that. Wow. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just like, I mean, you know, when you're going through this and I went through this after the Lyme, I was just like, I just found myself on my bathroom floor being like, what? Just like looking up at the sky and being like, what What the hell do you want from me? You like, can say it, Amy. Going- I curse all the time. What the fuck? <laughs> right? And I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, somebody fucking help me. Like, I am such a good person. Like, I do not deserve this. I'm writing a book. I'm trying to help people. Like, mm-hmm. somebody freaking help me. And like, from that moment on, I like my whole perception shifted. I started to become like a little bit more spiritual and believing in like understanding the universe and and that everything happens for a reason. And all these messages started to come to me and all these incredible people started to come into my life and mm-hmm. all, a lot of these energy healers and, and different functional medicine doctors. And I started to heal. So I know that's going to be a big part of my next book, but 
it's really sad when you think you you've made it and then you fall flat on your face again, you know, but you realize there's a lesson in everything. Exactly. And it's so hard to say that sometimes like, okay, what do I have to learn from this damn situation when you're in it? Right. But we can always look back and say, oh my gosh, that taught me this, that now I can spread this message to others. And so in order for you to continue spreading the messages and helping people, maybe there was some lesson in there. And of course, you know, better than I, that you had to learn in order to share with others others because now you've built this platform and these women are listening to you and these women are following you and like Susie and I are going to go buy our books and you know thank you oh for sure welcome and so I think that our whole life is just the sum of our learning experience and then how we transform that to be something positive in the world Mm -hmm. and I love that you're talking about energy medicine I myself am a massage therapist and energy healer and I love craniosacral. Oh, that's amazing. Come well, I love to New York. That. Well, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I should. She's from New um, York. I'm from New York, but I learned it out here. Of course, I moved to Los Angeles and fell into massage therapy and energy healing. And I feel like it's fully mm. embraced out here. And I'm sure there's many pockets around the country and the world that also embrace it. But I feel like it's not as well known as it could be. Craniosacral in particular is based in the fact that or the belief that your body knows how to heal itself. And I love that. Yes. But see, this is stuff like when I was 20 years old working at Vogue magazine, if you came up to me and said, go meditate and here's a green juice and your body's all energy and it can heal itself. I would have been like, lady, get the <laughs> hell out of my way. <laughs> I got to be somewhere. What are you talking me? about? I got, a, I got my boyfriend. I got to meet for dinner. I got the, my parents. I got to make happy. I got to make my friends happy. I got to, I'm 20 years old. I'm doing all this stuff. And then you realize at the end of the day, the only person that you ever need to make happy and the only person that can really heal you is you. And that probably sounds so crazy to half the people that are listening, but I mean, I'm just at the point where I'm just like, I'm going to tell people exactly how it is. Like, I don't want to BS anybody. I never want anyone to go through the hell that I went through for 10 very expensive, traumatizing, painful years. And I want to really shortcut this journey because I know so many people are suffering. And as you know, they're not getting the answers that they need. They're getting false information. Yeah. I mean, good for you. And I just feel like what we talked about this on another show, Susie, and you brought up this point that all of us women are so focused on helping others, like whether it's our children and we're giving all of ourselves to the relationships in our lives and doing for others that we're not doing for ourselves. And so it's very Mm -hmm. important to come back to ourselves and make sure our needs are being met first so that we can then meet the needs of others. And you said there was a statistic you said where, you know, 80% of a certain people, disease- well, people diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I don't remember the exact statistic, but it's a huge proportion are female. Yeah. And I think a lot of probably autoimmune disorders as well, more women come down with them than men. And if you think about that in a body mind perspective, your body is attacking itself. Mm-hmm. You're literally attacking your own self. And how many of us tell us we're too fat, we're not skinny enough, we're not pretty enough, we'll never be good enough. We're not good until we've reached this goal. Exactly. We're not good until someone else loves us. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, of course, men can have that too. But I just, from my own personal experience, when I found that out about fib- fibromyalgia, I was like, wow, that's that, and, and autoimmune issues. It's like, wow, that's yeah. really, really interesting. Our body, our immune systems are attacking our own bodies. Yeah. And it's so sad. I think, I just don't think that a lot of people, they just push down their feelings and they push down all the shit that they're facing every day. And they just want, you know, the picture perfect Instagram thing to look at. And, (laughs) you know, I just, I'm just trying to be as real as I can to, to show people how it really is, because I think that we need more vulnerability and authentic women out there really showing other women the way. Absolutely. And that it's okay to be vulnerable. Like, I mean, I'm 33. I've been single for the last 11 years. I I had no libido. I lost my period for 10 years. I could barely even, I missed all my friends' weddings and bachelorette parties. And I'm just starting to feel like a woman. I have my period back. I like, I feel alive and amazing. And I'm like, whoa, this is how you guys felt like the last 10 years. This is, this is freaking awesome. (laughs) You know, like this is what people feel like every day. Like, holy shit. Like you're not, I'm not waking up at 12 o'clock noon every day. I'm, you know what I mean? It's just, it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put this out there. You ever want to come to LA? We'll throw you a bachelorette party. We'll show you (laughs) what you've been missing out on. (laughs) You guys are amazing. Seriously. I love you. But we'll keep it. We'll mix in the green juices as well. Yeah. We'll keep it half healthy. 
And like everyone says, like the older you get, the worse you feel. And I only think that that is not necessarily true. It's how are you treating your body and how are you treating yourself and what are you telling yourself every day and how stressed are you? And it's a holistic approach. And when you change all those things, you can feel like that 21 year old again. Totally. I agree completely. I mean, I have clients that are like in their fifties and sixties and feeling amazing. I mean, my parents are living proof. They're like 65 and they look like they're 40. I mean, they look amazing and feel incredible and their inflammation has been like slashed to zero. Yeah. You know? We were just, looking at what magazine is that over there? Susie energy oh, times. Yeah. Christy Brinkley's on the cover. Let me grab it. Yeah. She's 62 years old. She looks stunning. She could pass for like 30. I mean, you know, she's doing something right. So it's like, there's all these people. And then there's this one woman on my Instagram feed and she is like, oh my gosh, I think she's 80 years old, lives a raw food diet, has long, beautiful hair. She's thin and vibrant. She does videos about what she eats every day. And you would think she was like 35 to 40 and she's like, 75 to 80, you know? So amazing. It's so amazing. Yeah. It's really, it's just really amazing when you can see results in other people and they kind of show you the way, you know what I mean? Food Heals Nation, if there's one thing that we know from this Lyme disease series and frankly, every episode of Food Heals, it's that we have to get our nutrition on point in order to assist our bodies in the healing process. So one of my favorite ways to get my nutrition is through Organifi's whole food blends. They are chock full of superfoods and adaptogens, all the nutrition you need. And check out their latest special for you Friday, March 24th to Tuesday, March 28th. You can build a kit and save 30%. That's right. You usually get 20% off using the discount code FOODHEALS at OrganifiShop.com slash FOODHEALS. And you will always get that. But from 324 to 328, you get 30% off. What? Here's what you have to do. Head on over to OrganifiShop.com slash pages slash build a bundle. On that page, you can see all the blends that you can pick from and you're going to build your own bundle. When you pick three, you're going to save 10% off plus free shipping. And then when you put food heels in the discount code at the end, it's going to turn into magically 30%. Amazing. So you can check out the green juice, the red juice, the Harmony, the Glow, the Organifi Complete Vanilla Protein, the red juice, the Organifi Gold, the Pure, the Critical Immunity, the Chaga Chai, all of the different travel packs. So choose any three, you'll save 10% plus free shipping, plus use the discount code FOODHEALS for an additional 20% to make that 30% off. Again, it's all over at OrganifiShop.com slash pages slash build dash a dash bundle. So Amy, tell us where should people start? Definitely. I mean, one really great place to start is with your food. And so in my new book, I really take people through how to detox your food and what that actually means and little changes that you can make every day. And so whether it's, you know, making something super small, like getting rid of the refined table salt, that white salt you see on the on the table every time you go to eat out and replacing it with real sea salt, not something that you see, you know, mass produced, something that you find at a Whole Foods market or in your local health food store, you know, so, swapping that out. That's so like let's, great- let's talk about this because this is one of my personal passions, salt and teeth. Don't ask me why or how that happened, but they are. So tell, <laughs> tell us. I love it. Oh my tell God, her, t- I ask friends. <laughs> <laughs> I live off of salt and tea. It's like amazing. Oh no, I said teeth, like healing your oh, teeth naturally. Tea. I you said tea. <laughs> I love tea too. So let's talk about salt. What's the difference between processed iodized table salt that we, we all know and sea salt or fleur de sel? Tell us the difference. Definitely. So the table salt that you find, you know, at the restaurant when you go out to eat is heavily refined and inflammatory. And so sea salt is full of minerals. So it's actually amazing for everything that you're doing throughout the day, because a lot of us are not getting a lot of these minerals in the foods that we eat, because, you know, these days, a lot of the soil, the vegetables that are being grown aren't in nutrient rich soil. And so it's just a great way to kind of get your body working in all aspects. And my doctors always had me use sea salt in water or just add sea salt to everything. I mean, I use so much sea salt. It's insane. And it doesn't bloat you. It doesn't cause inflammation. You know, it doesn't do anything, you know, that regular refined white table salt does. And And so you do like a Himalayan salt, a pink sea salt, but I would stick to a really good quality. And sometimes I find that people have a real resistance to this because we've been told at least through the eighties, 
and early 90s. Salt is bad. It raises your blood pressure. Use it sparingly, if at all. Why is the sea salt different? So the sea salt really is completely different. And I learned this from um, Mark Hyman, who's a medical doctor and yeah. functional doctor, and he's just wonderful. And he it was explaining to me that it's because of the mineral count that's in sea salt, it's, and it's not refined, so it's not stripped of all the all the good stuff. It's actually helping your body get through. You know, we need these minerals and we need salt to get, our body needs it. We're mostly made of water, right? So our body needs this on a daily basis to just do regular functions. And so that's why so many people see so many incredible benefits just from using sea salt. So I would just start adding that to some of your foods, maybe putting it in some of your water, different things like that. That's just a great, just a good, easy swap that you can make that people don't even often think about. Yeah, absolutely. And how can we create flavor without gluten, dairy, and soy, and sugar? Because we know those are allergens we want to get out of our diet. How can we create good, flavorful food? Definitely. You know, I wrote an article about this on Mind Body Green, like I think it was last year. And so I really like talk to people about how you can create flavor without these foods and how you really don't need those processed condiments that sit on your refrigerator door. And so just little swaps and little things that you can do. You know, for instance, you can soak cashews, which are incredible, you know, for 12 hours and then make some creamy dips. Today mm -hmm. I made about four different, you know, cream cheese like spreads out of soaked cashews. And then I added a whole bunch of herbs and, and, you know, cherry tomatoes and spices and fresh herbs have been really incredible for me too. So if you, I mean, you don't even have to cut them up, just rip them with your hands. I, I mean, I'm like a rabbit, just rip them and throw them into salads. <laughs> so everything from chives to scallions to basil and cilantro and rosemary and thyme. And, you know, it, there's so many herbs that we don't even think about. And there's so much flavor. If you just add a little bit of fresh herbs and some fresh lemon juice with freshly cracked pepper and sea salt, your taste buds, your mind will be blown. But if you just make a regular salad with iceberg lettuce and refined table salt and like the pepper that comes in the shaker and some processed dressing, like you're not going to be satisfied. And it's like, it's just completely inflammatory. Yeah. You know, so really switching and switching gears and, and figuring out how can I make this like an anti-inflammatory option, but keep the flavor profile really high. So like even freshly squeezed orange juice on salads, you know, with a little bit of my new obsession is avocado oil. Have you guys tried it? Yes. yes. <laughs> we live oh, in California. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I know. I forgot. Sorry. I'm like the city dweller. <laughs> it is mind blowing. I'm literally like, I don't even touch olive oil anymore. I'm like, I love avocado oil and the, the smoke point is so high. So I do a lot of avocado oil and, and some coconut oil as well. There are so many flavorful. Flavor. Yeah, there, sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just get excited. There's so many <laughs> flavorful nut oils. Uh, for a while, when I found hazelnut oil, yes. I was going insane. I was just, I was putting on everything. I would, I would just, you know... I wouldn't even put any kind of vinegar on my salads. I would just put hazelnut oil and, and sea salt and pepper, and I was so happy. There's also pistachio oil and walnut oil, avocado oil. There's so many different types of oils you can use that are so rich in flavor and healthy. And olive oil turns cancerous or what does it turn? It turns toxic. Yeah, it's like a carcinogen it's when a, you, when you, yeah, when the, the heat is too high. Exactly. Thank you. So olive oil turns into a carcinogen when it's heated at high temperatures. And so you really don't want to cook with olive oil at all. If you're going to have olive oil, you want to have it raw. You do not want to cook with it. So all the oils you guys are talking about, of course, I have to add coconut oil. And I also love the suggestion you had about making the nut milk because when I discovered this, it was like, one of those aha moments because I was like a dairy addict before I went clean and now I can't stand it. I think it's disgusting and it makes me feel terrible. But going from a dairy addict to a clean diet is hard because you you crave that creamy flavor and that creamy taste. So I discovered almond milk, rice milk, all these things at the grocery store. But the thing about those is they don't they're processed, they don't taste that great. You can literally make this at home so quickly, so easily, and it lasts. You can just have the almonds or have the cashews in your house. They last so long, and then whenever you want to make it, you just soak them overnight. In the morning, you have the creamiest, most delicious milk that you can drink by itself, or you can add to soups. You can make salad dressings. You can make so many things, and I just think it for anyone that was like addicted to dairy like I was who needs the creaminess in their life, it's so easy to have and it won't cause inflammation in your body. It won't make you feel like hell, like the way dairy yeah. used to make me feel. 
Completely. I agree completely. And, you know, even like things like white beans and chickpeas, I mean, you just puree those and soak them, you know, in your food processor and you get such a creamy spread. Avocado is super creamy. If you get a really rip avocado, coat, like full fat coconut milk is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, things that we don't even think about bananas, you know, that are really, really creamy and wonderful. I mean, even tahini has done wonders for me or like a really, really good you know, almond butter. But again, with almond butter, you just want to make sure, as you both know, you know, some of these almond butters, you look on the back of the ingredient list and it's like sugar, palm yeah. oil, canola. It's like salt. You you just, anyone that's listening, you want your almond butter or your cashew butter, whatever it is that you're eating, to just be almonds or just be cashews. Not ro- I mean, they could be dry roasted, but not roasted because most of the time they're roasted in canola oil and refined salt. Same mm-hmm. thing goes for store-bought nuts. And I have clients come to me and they're like, oh, I'm eating so healthy. I have nuts for a snack. And I'm like, what kind of nuts? And they say, you know, peanuts and planters, peanuts. And first of all, peanuts are so high in mold. So I have clients off of mold, mold nuts, which are peanuts and pistachios, but also they're soaked in canola oil and refined salt. So really, as you guys know, it's buying the raw form, raw almonds, raw cashews, you know, macadamia nuts, whatever it may be. But have you tried, I know you just mentioned hazelnut oil. Have you tried a macadamia nut oil or pumpkin seed oil? I yes. just tried it by... Um, I've tried, it? Yeah, I've tried macadamia. Yes. Oh my God. It's so good. It's like one of my favorite things. Uh, now Foods has this has a line of stuff. So I've just literally, they, they were like sending me a bunch of them and I was literally just pouring them all over my salads. But <laughs> I learned that from um, when you just said about olive oil is so interesting. I learned that from um, Frank Littman, who's a medical doc, a functional doctor in New York. And he said, you know, never use olive oil to cook, only use it in, a, in its raw form, like yeah. on salads or dips, things like that. You never want to heat it, which I thought was fascinating because I don't know about you ladies, but no one ever taught me that growing up. I mean, no. I don't know. it was like, make that eggplant parm when I was in my, you know, my, uh, my younger years, like on high heat with the yeah. high flame and it was smoking and I was inhaling all that good stuff. <laughs> right, right. I know there's so much mis- misinformation out there. So you just got to do your research. You just got to read your ingredients, just like you were saying, and you can really transform your health. So thank you so much for all of that great information. And can you tell us what is the difference in your opinion between a detox and a cleanse? Definitely. So a detox is really about getting the bad stuff out of your body, you know, all the bad bugs. So whether it's candida or parasites, pathogens, Lyme disease, whatever it may be, those kind of bad critters, kind of like the garbage in your body, getting rid of it. And then that's everything from eating organic. And so why is eating organic a detox? Because detoxing is really about helping and supporting the bombardment mm-hmm. that's of toxins that are on your liver every day. So when we lessen our body burden on a daily basis, so maybe instead of using, you know, a toxic sunscreen or chapstick, we switch to like a natural brand or an organic brand or, you know, eating organic food, skin brushing to help your lymph system move and, you know, Epsom salt baths different things like that, that can really help your body. I mean, and something I do not talk about on my blog yet or in my book, because it's, it's quite personal, but something, you know, for people who are struggling, I know something that's really helped me with my Lyme disease was um, organic coffee enemas in terms Mm -hmm. of detox. And so it kind of does a hiccup on your liver and and releases the bile. And I mean, I couldn't make it through my day without them for about three years because my die off was so bad, but it's really, it's really about supporting that liver on a daily basis. You know, the infrared saunas, the skin, all can we, of that. Can we go back to those? Can we go back to the enemas? Because I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. oh my God, so my, I, uh, I didn't know how you guys were going to, I didn't know how you guys were going to take it. I was like, oh, no, no. We, we know about them. We've, I've never, you've done one, haven't you, Ellie? I've done multiple, not one. She looked at me with disdain right now. Wow. She's like, you don't remember? I told you about no, it. No, every time you're... No, I think that they're the one of the most healing things that you can do. They are part of the Gerson Protocol, and the Gerson That's Protocol right. has a higher incidence of curing cancer than any Western medicine protocol. It's higher than radiation, surgery, chemotherapy. It's part of the program. You do them every day. Sometimes when you're super toxic, you have to do them more than once per day as you're doing a cleanse, as you're green juicing, as you're healing your body because what they discovered is that coffee somehow leaches to the toxic matter in your body and pulls it out. And so, you know, Avita, who we've had on the podcast before, that was part of her healing journey when she healed from cancer. But she always, she writes articles about it and she jokes about, hey, you're putting your coffee in the wrong hole, people. I was going to say, it doesn't (laughs) do that going down down your mouth, but it it does does up your bum. I know. I don't know why. (laughs) See, See, I have a personal 
prejudiced against it because my maternal grandmother had suggested them as long as as with green juice enemas to my mother when she had appendicitis Mm -hmm. and if she had done them her appendix would have burst but Mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here we're talking about Mm -hmm. detoxing and cleansing well i'm sure i mean i would say do it under the supervision supervision of a holistic practitioner that can really guide you you know don't just start doing not your local barista at starbucks (laughs) sorry that was another bad joke (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and make sure you're using organic and filtered water. That's like the big one. So how long did you do these, Amy? You said these, you did these for three years? You know, I had to do it. I could not get through my day. I mean, the diet was so bad I had to migraine until I did it every... I mean, I had to make it every morning. Let me tell you, it was the most time-consuming, exhausting. I feel like I have all this time in the morning now, and I'm like... Wait, I was saying to my mother the other day, I'm like, I have all this time in the morning now. She's like, probably because you're not making the freaking coffee enema every morning. <laughs> it's like, you have to make it, you got to strain it, you got to put it in the enema, but you got to let it cool so you don't burn the hell out of your ass. Like, it's like, <laughs> you know, I totally was there for many times. I was like, okay, I totally just burnt the hell out of my ass. But um, wait, wait, wait. Now, now I'll do it maybe... I mean, you know, I used to sleep on a biomat. I had an infrared sauna. I did the animals. When I moved downtown. I know the biomat. Like four, that thing's amazing. Yeah. When I moved downtown like four months ago, I told, I, you know, my parents like came on my moving day and I said, take all my medical things. I want them out of my apartment because I'm starting a new life. So I don't do the biomat. I don't do the infrared saunas and I don't do, I do coffee enemas maybe like once a week or once every two weeks because I just, just for like a little while, I just need to learn how to live and to get out of that mentality of like feeling like I'm sick and trying to get myself yeah. better. I just needed yeah. to just, it's almost like a mindset thing. So I'll probably get my sauna back in my apartment, maybe in a few months, just because I really liked it. But um, the, the coffee enemas, I really like them. Um, It's not something I'm going to write about on my blog yet. You know, I'm but then the last thing I need while dating is like someone to Google my name and then have that come up. And I'm like, I think I'll just wait a little bit. Okay, wait till you're married and then talk about it. I'm just oh, kidding. Boy. At I'll least like, engage. I'll send you the link when that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, welcome to the dating world. But um, anyway, so yeah, I just feel like I needed to start to just live a little bit and to have some fun and to not be so, you know, not fanatical, but just not focus on the medical stuff. I needed to learn how to be a third. 33-year-old woman who's healthy and thriving and, and not have to feel like I had to do all these protocols every day. Well, once you're healed and you're maintaining yourself, there's no need. And maybe it's just something you do once in a while, like you said, once a week or get your sauna back and do it once in a while. But you are main, you're doing it to maintain your health every day because you were in a healing process of getting better, but now you're healed. And so now you just have to maintain it with all the things you're doing with your food and your healthy well-being and your mindset. And so you don't need to do these things for the rest of your life. Those are the healing protocols that you did to get to where you are. But I re- I really understand how you were talking about the, the trauma of it and being in that mindset. And uh, I mean, so many doctors, so many years of different diagnoses, of not being believed, of getting wrong diagnoses, whatever. I totally understand how you're like, I got to move away from that and try to look towards the new, look towards the future. Completely. You've been through a lot, lady. I know. It's, you know, it's funny. I don't even think it, I kind of just, I don't really realize it until people like are like, holy cow, you've been through so much. And I'm like, I have, (laughs) I think I just was numb for like 11 years. What what choice did you have? You know, it's like you, you, you went through the path and you did what you had to do to get better. And you did, which is the amazing part. Thank you. You're so amazing. I mean, I really, it's just like you, I just want to help as many people as I can and, and really lift them up, you know, and, and show them that they're not alone. Well, we really appreciate that, Amy. So tell everyone where they can buy your book, how they can find you online, stalk you, get on your email list. (laughs) You guys are amazing. I love you. So my (laughs) website is thehealthyapple.com and I'm The Healthy Apple on all social media. So Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest. I haven't jumped on the Snapchat or Periscope yet because I I literally am just so exhausted from every form of social media. I'm trying to just zen out. (laughs) So my book is called Eating Clean, the 21-day plan to detox, fight inflammation, and reset your body. And it's on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, uh, Whole Foods Market, Costco, Sam's Club. It's it's in a lot of outlets. So I'm really I'm really grateful and the feedback has been wonderful. So yeah, I hope that, uh, that it really resonates and helps a lot of people. It definitely will. It will. Thank you. You guys are amazing. We need to play. We I will. <laughs> 
Good Heels Nation, I hope you enjoyed those interviews with Dr. Cabral and Amy. To hear the full episode with Amy, go all the way back to episode 92 of Food Heals. And if there's one thing that has been super clear to me during this Lyme series, and like I said earlier, almost all the episodes and interviews I've ever done on Food Heals, it's that we need to be consistently assisting our body in its natural detox process. So we're detoxing it out, putting the nutrition in. So So, you know, I caught up with our girl, Tina Anderson from Just Thrive Health to hear about her personal daily detox protocol and some of the products that can help all of us detox and get healthy. And don't forget that for the month of March, you can get 20% off all of your favorite supplements at justthrivehealth.com. That's right. Usually we get 15% off, but this is a special just for you, Food Heals Nation, during the month of March. So get your 20% off using the discount code FOODHEALS at at justthrivehealth.com. All right, let's hear from Tina. Roll it, Roxy. All right, Food Heals Nation, I'm here hanging out with Tina from Just Thrive Health, and we're talking about our detox protocols. As you know, unfortunately, we are exposed to more and more toxins on a daily basis, whether it's scary things like mercury from China's coal-powered plants reaching Seattle, or that BP Deepwater Horizon spill that was on the Gulf of Mexico, or most recently in Ohio, where 5 million pounds of vinyl chloride spilled into the water, the air, and the soil. Our bodies were just not designed to handle this high of a toxic load all of the time. So we know, you know, that we have to be constantly assisting our bodies and detoxing because of all of these circumstances beyond our control. So Tina, I would love for you to share it with Food Heals Nation. What does your personal daily detox protocol look like? Well, just taking the probiotic alone, the spore-based probiotic is part of a detoxification process because we know, you know, the more regular you are, you're getting rid of those toxins on a daily basis. Um, So the probiotic alone is just a such a critical part of detoxifying yourself. Another critical component um, that's in our, that I use is um, Ultimate IgG. We know immunoglobulin G, the role of IgG in the body is to bind and um, neutralize toxins and have them safely removed from the body. And that is the role of Ultimate IgG is it actually provides 25% more IgG in the gut. So it's helping detoxify your body and your gut so that it's able to you know, respond better to stressors and immune issues that come your way. So um, I'm a huge fan of just doing the probiotic and ultimate IgG for detoxing. And you've also got your immunity plus, which I think is a great thing to add to your routine because you're boosting your immunity daily. So we're detoxing and then we're also putting in all of these amazing vitamins and nutrients as well. Yeah. You know, the immunity plus is really a great product because it's very, you know, specific to our immunity. It's helping, it has the polyphenols in there that's helping fight off that oxidative stress. It has Epicor in there, which is a really unique ingredient that you don't really find on the market. It's a yeast extract that's actually helping further support the immune system and, you know, helping clean up and detoxify and and fight off some of these, you know, immune busters out there, the, you know, people who are dealing with immune issues. Right. So Food Heals Nation, go get your IgG, your Immunity Plus, and your spore-based probiotics so you can detox and add lots of nutrition in at the same time. That's all over at justthrivehealth.com. Use the discount code FOODHEALS to save 20% off your order. Thanks, Tina. You bet. Food Heals Nation, if you're like me, you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox. And I personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day. But have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking? So according to the Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in the U.S. has harmful contaminants in its tap water. So ditch the tap water, ditch the cheap water filters, and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. 
It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A Q U A T R U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.